Okay. Do I get it? Good. This is the worst thing the holidays. Like, literally, that's the worst thing ever. I think we're close enough to week out. Yeah. All right, please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure. Uh, all right, let's for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful day. We are all in the spirit of thanksgiving as that time of year approaches. We ask that all people who are traveling during this holiday season that you please keep safe um, and that the warmth, of, the warmth of family prevails. We ask as always that you especially protect those are, who are fighting for our freedoms and their families. We ask all this through your son. Amen. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Kirchner? Here. Commissioner Curtis? Here. I'll accept a, a motion to approve the digital, digital, digital <coughs> audio visual. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I was reporting. I know what you're putting in gummy bears now. <laughs> 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 it's not good. Let's try that again. That thing. Rewind the tapes. Fix that in post op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fix it in post op. That's why you're running for state. He's so so articulate. (laughs) (laughs) Very eloquent speaker. (laughs) (laughs) Digital audio visual recording of the previous board's minute. Yeah. Motion on that? (laughs) Some more. Got a motion. And Mike seconded? Yes, I Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. All right. Uh, Any adjustments today? Uh, Just that I need an executive session. Need an executive session. All right. We'll get that at the end. Uh, Administrator report. I just wanted to go over budgets a little bit. Um, Since we had our meeting yesterday, um, gave a... Uh, moving the revenue up a little bit from uh, what the sheriff had talked about what the judges had talked about um, adding those in it brings me up to about a 17 four um, I've got the budgets with some not some cuts but maybe not everybody's wish list so it's at about 17 three um, I know Board of Elections is going to need to come in because their requests were high I left it flat but I know they're going to need it just because it's the presidential election Um, So right now theirs is just flat in this budget. So I know we talked about yesterday a little bit potentially just doing a partial or temporary and but I just wanted to try to throw some numbers to get it at least so we're so we got a balanced budget. It doesn't include any raises except for the union contracts that's required. So um, and that's not any further discussions with budget commission uh, that we plan on having with them next week. So um, non general, I don't have yet because I'm still working with the auditor's office to make sure their revenues are good. They send me budgets, but sometimes their revenues aren't high enough, so we have to make adjustments. <coughs> so I've still got those. Hopefully, I'll be ready for that next week. So, you think we can pass the 17 3 budget next week? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, Board of Elections, you want to have a special session with them, or do you want to have a conversation with them? Next week, or do you want to put that until after the first of the year, or what do you, what do you think of that? Um, I was thinking after the first of the year, but we can have them come in. Um, it, that's up to you. I was thinking after the first of the year. They're going to need it, but then we'll have a good idea where our carryover is, because this presidential election won't necessarily be for the next couple of years. But I'll let them ask for it, because they'll, they'll okay. explain it better than I do. So. Yeah, so I, I think a couple of things. One is that uh, it's a good idea next Tuesday to have the commission members in here, with the prosecutor, and treasurer, and auditor. Uh, you know, we've kicked a, a couple of numbers around here, but there have been in years past, if it, this is any indication, there have been some adjustments uh, during the, the last month. Uh, my experience has been they've all been positive for the county, but the opposite could be true. So we need to have a good conversation about that. Uh, Stacy has you know, looked at, uh, this doesn't incru- include any employee increases, but the step up with um, benefits, I think is 1%. 
as it turns out, is pretty simple. 1% is 100, 2% is 200, 3% is 300. So, you know, we have to have that discussion as well. Uh, so I think it's a good thing that next week, in open session, we'll be able to discuss a number of these things, and hopefully by that time we'll be able to uh, firm up a couple more numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and we also have to have the discussion about the budget stabilization fund. And, you know, is there a is there thing, anything available? And hopefully we'll know by that discussion as to whether you know, where we have to look to uh, fund more collections increases, right? So. Yeah, and if this does, doesn't come into X, absolute focus before year end. We can always do things after the, the first of the year as it relates to employee increases. You know, we are giving them the the uh, holiday for the premiums, health insurance, so with that and keeping their insurance flat. So they've got they've got that in the can already. Uh, so we may need to pick that after year end. Yeah, well, kudos to you for having this uh, this format at this point. We're yeah. in good shape here. And, yeah. Uh, there there will be some adjustments, obviously, but we've got the basic <coughs> budget put together. And sheriff did a great job. Yes, they yeah, too, did. Of, uh, you know, circling back and putting this plan together. So. And, and he did uh, request Thank a him. couple cars in his budget. I talked to him about um, if we could hold those until maybe. Uh, mid year, so usually his rotation, you know, two vehicles every year, and asked if we could hold off. He was checking just because the when they run the police cars are different times of the year, so he's going to check to make sure. Um, but he's open to work with us on, um, you know, waiting and seeing <coughs> what revenue is going to be. So, please. And just for everybody else's uh, information, we did have a roundtable discussion with the judges and the sheriffs yesterday. Just make sure that all of our justice is being served and in the best fashion and everybody was in a very uh, co collaborative mood and uh, we're very fortunate that everybody's willing to sit around the table and have those conversations because we're all in it together and so I was, I was really happy with the, the participation. And I think one of the takeaways from that too is it's a good thing that it isn't always about money you know there are some situations with um, uh, the opiate uh, uh, problem that we have that uh, uh, folks need to detox and sometimes that doesn't generate income for us but it is something that the judges need to do under the pivot program and uh, you know if we were just talking about dollars and cents many of those people would be back on the street and probably read the bottom on page three of the advertiser so we're happy that the judges are very conscientious not only talking about money and the sheriff as well but also talking about the safety of our citizens that's right. Save minds. Yeah, no, I think, you know, just as a common sense citizen, you think of the jail as, you know, a criminal thing where you take people and lock them up for a crime, but um, it's much, much more than that. Um, you know, from mental health to um, drugs and alcohol and just to, just a lot of, a lot of people that enter that jail, a lot of things go on. I think they do a great job out there. So. Good understand. Good explanation for all of us too. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right. yeah. Cool. Commissioner reports. You want to get anything else? Yeah. I do. Just a couple things. I just came from Fall Story Economic Development, and um, the Learning Center over there. Just great, positive uh, meeting with them. They're doing good things tonight. The Joint Comprehensive Plan Round Two will take effect. Uh, there'll be a meeting there at five o'clock. You're looking forward to that. Um, I uh, did report out. We had an opportunity to meet with uh, Auditor Keith Faber here a few days ago, and uh, the mayor brought up this morning how he feels the state has been reaching out to the smaller communities and the smaller cities and, and offering a little better open line communication. And I. I brought the example up with uh, Auditor Faber, who was here. Uh, the governor basically said, get out and we'll see the people. And um, you know, these small towns, villages, entities, see what you can do to help them. And uh, Ford Minnell gave the example that they had us, we have an example here with the tip where the money came in and went right out. I'm not sure we even touched the money, mm -hmm. but we had a $3,000 auditor bill from the state of Ohio. And they gave the example, a very similar one, 
and one of the economic development entities where that happened and the bill was six thousand mm dollars -hmm. from the auditor's office and, and you know these things add up as Charlene you could attest to so uh, they were pleased to hear that and uh, yeah I want to give a shout out for the auditor to come up here we had a nice little meeting and and uh, so we, you know we support those initiatives um, and then <laughs> this is kind of a I'll end with this because we're talking about cybersecurity and, and uh, our EMA here at uh, in the county is working with Homeland Security and uh, we are conducting an audit of our own system and uh, uh, that's a good thing you know uh, we have holes or there are other ways we can improve it economic development was hacked yesterday in a kind of a fun way as it turned out but Renee the, the director um, she said I guess I'm getting the an administrative assistant someone hacked her account Posted an administrative assistant job with a full job description, eighteen dollars an hour. Had her name in it, Foster oh, Economic that. Development on Indeed.com. I saw that. And she got they got eighty three applicants <laughs> <laughs> in a couple hours. <laughs> and so she they called Indeed and they took it down. And it's just crazy this the way people hack everything and. So, uh, IT committee, we're working on. You can never stop it, but we're we're constantly talking about it and, and uh, working towards efficient ways to uh, protect ourselves. So, uh, interesting. Just to uh, pony off that is uh, um, our IT committee. I think we talked about it. Is um, with the uh, board of elections having to do all their <coughs> cybersecurity updates that they're going through. Um, they actually reached out to Jake, our IT consultant, and asked if the county would be willing, since the Board of Elections is on there, is on our network, they were testing theirs, but they said, are you willing? We'll do it at no cost to the county, we'll do it. And so they've been hitting, um, they've been doing phishing emails, they've been testing, you know, IP addresses, they've been, so we've got one follow-up phone Great. call with them today you know to find out um you know where our weaknesses and where our strengths are at so it's gonna be kind of kind of exciting kind of, kind of interesting I can't imagine what that would have cost you know homeland security audited the, the board of elections yeah. and then they they offered to do yeah. accounting for nothing so we obviously took them up on that yeah yeah well, this is in the form of a little PSA. It really isn't directly the public service announcement. It isn't directly related to our discussions, but it is cyber. Uh, the thing that's going on, I, I still sit on a bank board, the thing that's going on in the banking business right now is your debit card. The first four numbers of your debit card is called the bank identification number. So everybody has four sets of four numbers on their card, right? Well, the guys have figured out, uh, the people out there have figured out how to use that. And rather than having to get 16 numbers, they just have to get 12 and match it up with an expiration date. So mm -hmm. the point that I'm trying to make here is if you have anything on your debit card or credit card that's a, a dollar or a dime, don't ignore it because what, you know, say that's just a dollar, I don't even remember what I used it for, but I'm not gonna worry about it. That's how they test them to make certain that they can get in. Mm -hmm. The next debit or credit will be a thousand dollars. So uh, if you see anything on your statement that alarms you that you know you had nothing to do with, uh, call your bank because it's uh, it's it's really more and more prevalent as weeks go on. I heard about it six months ago, and now now they they've got computer programs that run all night. They've got the first four digits. They figure out the last uh, nine, and they go from there. So even if it's ten cents, call the bank and tell them this doesn't look right. So that's my public service announcement. Good. I, yeah, I, I have nothing else. Thank you. Anything else, Mike? Yeah, I, uh, we had a call, uh, we all had a call or an email from John Workman at the uh, Development Services Office and I, he happened to call me back yesterday. Okay, good. He, he was concerned about uh, 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 sunshine laws, et cetera, to meet with us so he wanted to have, and you guys are more than welcome to call him, but the gist of the conversation, uh, this, is our, this is our topic of uh, the turbine applications, the wind turbine companies. You know, we have passed, Ledger, we have passed a resolution 19-73 uh, 
uh, that says that if you had to reapply for a project, you were no longer under the uh, alternative energy zone. Well, <clears throat> I am told by Mr. Workman, who is Chief Business Services uh, of the Business Services Division for our Auto Department Services Agency, that there are two separate issues. One is the OPSB, Ohio Power Siding Board approval, and the other is the approval of the AEZ by the Development Services Agency. The two are not tied together. Once the Development Service Agency approves a pilot program or an AEZ, it stays into effect during the course of the time that the folks are in the project. Now, I explained to him that it looked to me, they, they, the reason that us power gave, and maybe there's an us power up here today, the reason that us power gave was that it was a timing issue. That was why the application was uh, resubmitted, withdrawn and then resubmitted. Now, I, and timing issue is pretty ambiguous to me. I don't know exactly what that means. I suggested it was because there were a number of sites that they were no longer going to use. They had to recite a number of the turbines. Um, and so the new application is, in my opinion, substantially different than the previous application. And if that's the case, uh, council has told him that if, if it is substantially different, then they, they probably will agree with us and revoke the pilot. So that's where we stand. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I had the clarification, or we talked about a clarification of that, of that resolution to make certain everybody understood where we were at with that. Um, because of the FAA's uh, entry into uh, the application process, and because of some uh, leases, I, I don't know any of this to be a fact, but because of some leases that have been litigated, um, I believe that there are some sites that are no longer uh, legitimate or valid from the first application that they made. So, so the configuration of the siting may be substantially different, and if it is, it would be considered a new project and therefore not qualified under the pilot. That's really the gist of uh, the conversation. You guys are welcome to give them a call. Lydia Mahalik, uh, who heads up this department, uh, has also reviewed this and wants to have some conversations at some point with us or with representatives to talk about it. She's a, a real vocal control kind of a person, being the uh, recently uh, ex-mayor of uh, Finley, as you guys know. Uh, great for this job, she's a great lady. And uh, I, she would like at some point to have a conversation about this. So when you were gone, we did not act on that uh, resolution? Right, we've got uh, the resolution here somewhere. We sent it to the prosecutor. Um, the prosecutor felt well, I read his email that we really don't need it, but if we wanted to pass it, he's okay with it. Yeah, the, the, the so conversation I had with the Department of Certain. Uh, is that how you saw it? Shane? Yeah, yeah. Basically. And that's how I saw it too. Development yeah. Services. I, I, I think it's, would, I yeah, would like to. It can't hurt. And uh, they felt that our resolution wasn't Hold on. exactly clear to them, so we wanted to make it as clear as we possibly could. And that's why we, that's why we put the resolution together. So we wrote that resolution, um, and I guess that I'll introduce it now for approval. Mm -hmm. so okay. Because it's got the old date on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should I bore you? Uh, <laughs> that, uh, this is 19. The resolution 1973. <laughs> <laughs> Any new applications to the 2011 alternative energy zone must be submitted to the proper authorities by June 30th. If they're not. They must resubmit, if they have to resubmit their application, they will no longer be grandfathered under the agreement. And this board supplemented an amended resolution 1973 by subsequent resolution 19-159. And whereas the Seneca Wind LLC application before the Power Society Board was dismissed by Seneca Wind on August 9, 2019, be it resolved that any new application filed by Seneca Wind LLC with the Ohio Power Society Board shall not be part of or subject to or receive any benefit of the 2011 AEZ and shall not qualify as a qualified energy project under Ohio Revised Code Section 5727.75. <coughs> Further resolved that the Ohio Development Services Agency shall immediately rescind and cancel the Ohio Qualified Energy Project Tax Exemption Certificate for Seneca Wind that was dated August 31st, 2018. 
We will send copies of this to the proper authorities, tax commissioner, department services, our siting board, and the uh, county treasurer. So, resolved that it is and determined that all formal actions of this board concerning and relating to the adoption of this resolution were so adopted in an open meeting of this board that all deliberations of the board and of any of its committees that resulted in such formal actions were in meetings open to the public and in compliance with all legal requirements. Uh, so that is a motion to accept this resolution. Second, Tony. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah, and I think this, uh, to quote Carl Kirshner, is the suspenders with the belt, right? Yeah, belt and right. suspenders. So we we already think we've done this. This this adds uh, another level of clarity that we've sunset it. So uh, uh, roll call. Commissioner Garbisa? Yes. Commissioner Kershner? Yes. Commissioner Cavins? Yeah. All right. So, uh, your report. Yeah, you know, I guess, you know, we, we've been busy doing a lot of things around the uh, the, the county, so it's uh, it, it's been a busy week. But, uh, yeah, the number one thing on our agenda for today is that it's Nikki's birthday. Happy birthday, Nick. So, uh, you know, I think we need a little bit of a happy birthday song. Shirley, will you lead us? Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Glory. Happy birthday to you. Woo! It is a big one, too. Three. Mm -hmm. You turned 21 again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you 25. Where are we going? <laughs> Nikki does a great job for us. She's a Seneca East grad. It makes her good. So, <laughs> Corey, when Nikki got her first drink, she should be forty at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, comprehensive planning tonight at Fostoria, and I see a lot of faces that were here last night. Uh, thank you very much for showing up. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Uh, it's important to get that input. So, um, anything else for Old Venice? We've kind of talked budgets and we've talked the uh, wind resolution. Anything else for Old Business? Okay, good. New business. New business, um, Stephanie. Um, she had sent a letter. We just actually got it yesterday, so I don't even know if they've had a chance to read it. But um, uh, from Fostoria, if you want to come up. Uh, she sent a letter said she was going to be here today, so we didn't get a chance to put it on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah, we read it. Uh, oh, I read oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> you did. You did all get a chance to read my letter then? Yeah. In that case, I won't rehash it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show up today and formally introduce myself. Um, I'm relatively new at the position, but if you have any questions, I'll do my very best to answer them. Um, what does uh, Hancock and Wood pay towards the um, prosecutors mm -hmm. or so law Wood directors fee? Wood County pays us $2,000 annually. Um, I will note that their caseload is substantially um, less. They have about, um, I apologize, I love my file in my boss story office. Oh. Technically on maternity leave, I'm a little scatterbrained at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think Wood County, they have about approximately 80 cases annually, whereas Seneca County, we have, uh, I think, 1,600 annually. So Wood County pays us 2000 annually. And Hancock County pays us twenty-seven five, twenty-seven thousand five hundred annually. Um, their caseload is, I believe, around six hundred cases annually. So again, Seneca County is obviously our, our largest portion of cases. So this is prosecution. Correct. Um, is this prosecution of criminal misdemeanor criminal cases and traffic cases. Um, we also handle felony preliminary hearings at the Foster Municipal. Is and civil um, a separate law director? Civil, yeah, our, our office doesn't really handle civil matters. Um, that would be a private um, council. I obviously handle civil matters um, for representing the city. Pertaining um, to the city. Yes, but otherwise, um, no, we don't do civil. We do, some, we do zoning for Wood County in Perry Township. Um, my assistants handle all of the zoning stuff, so I'm not... I'm not sure if we do much zoning for the townships and for Jackson and Lavender. Um, okay. 
And do we do we pay anything to City Tippin? <coughs> yeah, we pay quite a bit for City Tippin. Um, that one with me. That one I didn't pull. It's. Uh, but their prosecution is now with the prosecutor's office. office. Yeah. yeah, right. Um, and I guess I'll say what the correct request is since we, we haven't talked about that. The request is we've been paying um, for the law director $21,000, and it's been that probably since um, 2010. I think at one point we even had to reduce it because we were, that might have been nine or ten where we had to reduce it because we were having budgeting issues. Um, but there's been no significant increase. Um, my records went back to 2009. There have been no increase since then. I think for one year there was an increase of $100. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no no increase in the last decade. That's not material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay your gas over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually also a county employee, so. Okay. <laughs> not a problem coming over here. <laughs> and the caseload uh, increased by 18% from 2017 to 2018. Um, yeah, so she's requesting a 4% increase to the funding. So, I agree. Oh, sorry. Uh, my apologies. Go ahead. Yeah, is this a statutory requirement? It is. I called uh, Derek this morning, uh, and maybe you know the code, but I did call Derek this morning to see what our requirement or what that code was. So yeah, I, I just don't know. What yeah. the statutory I'm not sure of the is. code section, but I know that it basically says you pay us however much you want. So I think I think that recently changed. I think there used to be more of an actual statutory requirement, and now it's just at your guys' discretion. Okay. The so difference between our want and our can are two different things. So, <laughs> so the twenty-one thousand that is that in your budget right now? Yes. Okay. So I'm reading your letter, Stacy mm -hmm. Ford. I don't text and drive or read emails. <laughs> Another PSA. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. But um, so the request is four percent above the twenty-one. Correct. That's your request. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. You guys are probably aware we're in fiscal emergency. Yes. So um, we have oversight by the state auditor, and they have requested at our budget meeting that I request an additional four percent from each county. Um, I would note that I think what four percent of twenty-one thousand. It's roughly what eight hundred dollars. You know. So. I had to go to Wood County and ask them for an extra eighty dollars annually. So <laughs> <laughs> they, they, well, they were they were a little they didn't really give me a for sure answer. Okay. So. <laughs> I will say that uh, the mayor spoke this morning. Uh, they had their first reading at council right on the fiscal emergency. Correct. Recovery. Yes, we weren't we weren't able to pass anything on Tuesday. We were missing a couple of council members. Um, so the state auditors were present at our council meeting on Tuesday, and it was intended to pass that as an emergency, but we couldn't pass anything. But, and I, I just, Foster has just worked extremely hard to fix it. So uh, I support them. They're, at, they're requesting that you come to us for this. Okay. We do pay a portion of their um, judges, clerk records, bailiffs, deputy bailiffs. Um, looks like the last one we paid. Um, I think is still in that same statute. There's a percentage, and um, looks like we were 105,000. Do you know what your total budget is? Or is your um, gosh, I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. Um, it's well, I think you know, I think what we ought to do is if, uh, let's let's plug it in uh, for the final. Budget yeah. approval. That's why, like, unless we've uh, got some real stumbling block that we can't, we can certainly advise you on that. But let's let's yeah. have, have advice Stacy to put it in uh, the increase eight hundred dollars or eight hundred eight dollars, whatever eight hundred four dollars, whatever the number is. And if there's any other numbers that you would request, I could certainly get those and, and email them to you guys. Could you could you forward us the, the overall budget just, just Absolutely. so we know just what for my department? Yeah, so that we know what portion of that we're Absolutely. underwriting. Mm -hmm. I just like to know. That. Just a higher level question. So the arrangement the county has with Judge Rep and the municipalities, including Postoria, is that a is that set and ongoing as far as budgets go, or? Uh, uh, yeah, Judge, Judge Rep has not um, asked for an increase. I know the prosecution is now over with the. Um, 
but the prosecutor's a, office. They merged. So but Judge Rep is a bigger blanket, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the support staff in Fostoria. Right. And all the, there's a lot of. Yeah, he merged those two courts. Things, right? yeah, that come here. So when you say we're allocating money, mm -hmm. that's part of Judge Rep's court. Yeah, and, and don't forget, you know, Shane's brought this topic forward too, you know, that the, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The state took over the public defender's portion of things as they were supposed to do statutorily. But now they're coming back with, as we talked about yesterday, yeah, the parole officers. Yeah, parole officers. So, I mean, that's something that's going to come at us too here. Okay, and you're, you're part of all that, so. Yes. Including the city, city law director. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mike made a motion. Tony seconded. Put it in the budget. Do we want to vote on that? Sure. That's with it. I can wait and just put it in the budget. <coughs> you don't have to do a separate one if you, okay. if you don't, okay. don't need That'll to. That'll be part of the next week. Right. Yep. I'll just have okay. it to the bus for as long. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming over. Oh, they're a new Thank business. You Thank you. Yes. You don't need to stick around. Go. Okay. Go put pe bad people away. I'm actually going to take care of the baby. I'll take care of my second job, so over at the county. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much for your time. Okay. I have a supplemental yes. appropriation request from the treasurer's office. Um, this is to update tax bills. Um, Julie, or the auditor and the treasurer, are splitting this bill. Um, they've they've come up with a new formula. They want printed on the tax bill so that it actually separates out all of the individual taxes, so it comes at a cost. So they're asking uh, in her in his street tax fund uh, for an additional three thousand um, dollars to get those printed. So that was his request into his contract service line. Then I have a request from the sheriff's office. It's actually just an appropriation adjustment. Um, he's moving uh, 52000 from his salary on the roadside to the salaries on his jail side. And um, that should cover him for the rest of the year. Um, what else do I have? I have Resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for 2019 for transit, passenger, <coughs> bus, style, door, on behalf of the Seneca County Veterans Services Commission. Um, bids are to be in 10 a.m. Thursday, December 19th, here at the Commissioner's Office. Uh, I have a resolution appointing Tony Paradiso to the expired term of Holly Stacy to represent Seneca County Commissioners on the District Public Works um, Committee for Ohio Public Works Commission, District 16, expiring April 30th, 2021. Okay, sounds important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meetings tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> I thought we already did that for you, but we must not have. Okay, all right. Okay. And then I have a resolution appointing uh, Melissa Weininger to the Facilities Governing Board for Cross Crossway for a three-year term, term beginning December 1st, 2019, and expiring on December 1st, 2022. And those are all I have. I will move for approval. Second. Roll call. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Uh, before we move into public comment, do we want to set our calendar please, for the rest of uh, the year? The year? Okay. Yes. Um, yes, we do. On there next week. The way this works is, you know, we all have to go home and talk to our significant others, <laughs> and meet back here, yeah. <laughs> and have the conversation. So, so right now, next week is at nine o'clock. Right. Yeah. That's Tuesday the twenty sixth. Yep, Tuesday the twenty sixth. We're not meeting on Thursday. Right. Because okay. it's Thanksgiving. Uh, you guys can come in if you want. <laughs> I think Vicky and I will stay home. Vicky's <laughs> house. That make it easy for her. Come on, um, and then the week, the first week in December, it is on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. That's because of uh, winter conference. 
December third. Okay. The, uh, all I'm asking there is, can we change the third meeting to nine thirty? That would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. You want it at nine? Nine would be great. That's good. If we can do cool. that. Vicky, does it work for you? <laughs> Have your car back by then? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> on the nineteenth. On the third. <laughs> Is that okay, Stacy? It looks like it. Yeah. Okay. Good. I don't see anything else on there. Um, and then the following week goes back to our normal schedule on the twelfth. Yep. Then the 19th regular schedule, and then the 26th, the day after Christmas, um, we do have one scheduled just because it's on our normal rotation. Yeah, that works for me every round, so okay. I wouldn't expect there to be much. Yeah, I don't expect it to be. Um, you say we are scheduled for the 26th then? 26th, yeah. Okay. Um, and we'll have... You know, Monday, Tuesday, if I guess if the auditor would need any final close ups, but I think anything they would have, we would have, be able to have done on the 26th. So, okay. um, sure. so I'm not anticipating having one the 30th or 31st, but um, I'll make sure that's good with the auditor, make sure she doesn't need anything closing. Well, we do have it open. We're, is everybody okay on the 30th or 31st in case we need to? Uh, yeah, probably won't be you. Okay, so we can I might not be here either, so. Yeah. Stacy's birthday. My birthday. Yeah, I'm not going to be in here so you guys can sing. We'll just send you a video of it. Yeah. You didn't appreciate the song? to think it was good? I thought it was great. Don't be offended, Shirley. So then the reorg, can we do that on the, the 9th, 9th, January 9th? No. I yeah. didn't anticipate have one on the 2nd of January. Um, yeah. I don't have that one on our calendar. We usually right. skip that week. Yeah. Good. And yeah. then the next following would be, if we stayed with our Thursdays, would be the 9th. Perfect. 10? So perfect. At 10, yes. All right. And then then we'll set our... Yep. Okay, do you buy your plane tickets now? <laughs> I can see your grandkids. Oh, see that. Yeah. And I, um, I don't know what we anticipate doing for next year. How we wanna? Yeah, we'll talk about that on the ninth, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the number one complainer about Thursday meetings is Judge Kelby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we met on Tuesday for the last three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. We really like Thursdays, but yeah, it's nice to have Judge Kelby in every once in a while. He's a He's Yeah. All right. So we're good until then. Good. All right. Uh, public comments. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Tyler Shelf, uh, citizen of Tiffin here. I had a question, and then I also had a comment I wanted to make. Um, how often does the county do their negotiations with the unions? Is that every year that you guys do that, or is it every two, three? Three. Every three. Okay. Just curious. <laughs> Um, then I just wanted to also say kudos to the county for the pivot program and the judges, everything you guys have done with that. Um, there's some people I've known or grown up with that lost their way or lost their path at a certain point, and I've, I've seen the direct results of that. So I just wanted to say kudos to you guys for fun, you. funding that and doing that. It's, it's truly changed lives. So we got negotiations for that coming up pretty quickly, don't we? Um, it seems like I lose track of time, but you know, we're um, back in that room. Sheriff was. Last year, this year, and next year, so okay. we won't have to All do right. his until. Um, I think John and the family's the same, same okay. time frame. Good. 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 Yep. First Adams day. Township, Bill Frankert, uh, attended a comprehensive plan last night that uh, Charlene hosted, and, and uh, quite a turnout. That was, uh, I think, a little more, a few more people showed up than what anticipated Charlene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was wonderful. Yep. That's How many great. people were there? I'm going to say between 35 and 40. Jeez, I thought there was a whole lot more than that. It yeah. felt like it, but it, about 35. Really? Yeah. Okay. Was so we spent the uh, huh? last couple weeks, four days down Columbus for the judicatory hearings for the Republic Wind Project. Uh, and then uh, uh, Trustee Crothers and myself, we've submitted uh, uh, testimony in support of House Bill 401, submitted that uh, for last week. And uh, working currently with the county engineer on updates over the road signs. So that's what's happening in Adams Township. 
Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Quick, is it right if I give a quick city report? Sure. Um, had the ribbon cutting yesterday at the Willows. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah. Good, good turnout for that. <laughs> yeah. The food was amazing. Yeah. That guy's for reals, right, Audrey? <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, very, very well attended. They had their grand opening. That was a $14 million investment in the community and the county, so that was uh, very well attended. Um, along with uh, Bill Frankert, they, uh, like he said, the comprehensive plan was well attended as well. It's nice to get input from the public. And as you said, Foster Royal being nice, it'll be interesting to see what they come back with. Um, not sure if you guys read in the paper or not, the City uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, passed the uh, Riverfront project by a vote of 3 to 1. So that'll move to the ABR, and that was also very well attended. It was a full room up there at Council Chambers. So uh, that'll be interesting to see how that moves. Um, rededication to Riverfront Park, that was last week, actually right after last week's commissioner's meeting, well attended as well. I think we had full council there, minus one council member. Um, we're stocked up on salt for the winter, so we'll be ready to keep the streets paved and salted and keep everything cleared off. We're stocked up for the year. Uh, budget means continue to move forward. That's all moving uh, in a positive direction as well. And uh, here in the next week or two, there'll be some press releases coming out. There's some more new businesses coming to town in Seneca County. So keep your eyes peeled for uh, the PSEP press releases. What are the What are the next steps on that? We've got the zoning board to approve the, 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 the variance. Uh, Dave Martin was talking about well, we have <coughs> the architecture board to review, right? Yep. But wasn't there one more step? Somebody else, uh, planning commission. You know what? I'll I'll dive in. I'll double check that. I know okay, it has to go to ABR. There might I be one thought more I heard Dave say that he wanted the planning commission to approve it prior to a zoning change. I thought that's what I heard him say. You and I were out in the hall. I'll tell you, it was it was difficult hearing yeah, everything yeah, in that meeting. But you know what? I'll find out and I'll report back. Okay. But I just I thought there were two more steps, but it may be just your <clears> work. ABR for sure, but. Hmm. Two comments here when everybody's done. Good. Yeah, you good? Uh, All right. Ken, you good? Uh, kudos to Charlene the Grant, the Attica. Woo! That was uh, top secret last meeting. <laughs> 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 top, top secret. That's right. <laughs> and it's a, it's a Shane executive summary of that process. Land bank, buildings down. Yeah, everybody was involved. That Literally was, everybody. Was uh, yeah. FEDC, regional planning. Land Bank, Mike and Land Bank, uh, Health Department, Health Department, Health Department uh, Private Sector, private everybody. And village, yeah. everybody yeah. got the building yeah. down. American Legion, Patrick yeah. Day salute, well, yeah. initial $5,000 seed money for the uh, All Patriots awesome. Memorial, American Legion in Attica, right. fundraising. Sutton Bank. Sutton Bank came in, you know, they made the, they were a difference maker, Sutton Bank, and then regional planning, finishing it off with a grant application to ODNR. Nice job on that. Wow. Yeah, yeah John Monk down yesterday or so. Yeah. On the radio this <coughs> nice morning. Piece. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the big takeaway from that whole from the whole grant application process is is that the guys at American Legion Post and Attica are the most amazing men to work with ever. They jump to and help yeah. within two seconds. I call, I text cool. them, they were yeah. given info right away. Couldn't have gotten the application completed without them. There's just no way. Um, and the second takeaway from that process is we hear a lot about the public and private partnership that went into tearing down the Eagles building and what's going into this. But the reason this grant application was so awesome is because almost all of the labor is being donated. Mm -hmm. Everything is being given to them at cost or discounted cost. Um, they're trying to stay as local as possible and everyone is doing everything possible to make this the most cost-effective project they can and donate their time. Sure. So it, it really is a public-private community project. It really is a shiner. So well, excited. kudos to our prosecutor because he had to figure out a way for us to <coughs> do commercial Absolutely. property. Yeah. You know, uh, you so got to celebrate. Renee and successes. the prosecutor Huge both success. worked really hard to just get the get it off the ground. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, saving cost, the Frost Parkway war memorials are now lit. You may have noticed that press release. Um, and they're not only lit. You guys did a hard job. I mean, they're lit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it looks great. Mike's really so, nice been lit before. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so we, uh, 
this has been this has been three years in the works, but uh, to make that project go crossway, donated some labor, okay, um, and took substantial cost out of the uh, project, and they were very very good to work with. The people across, everybody involved, and basically what they did is they hand dug the trenches from monument to monument so all the lights could be connected. They provided that labor and we guesstimated two days worth of labor. They were done by three o'clock on the first day. And they just they attacked it and they did a great job. So well, people in jail are practicing nice tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But they were uh, so it's just it's just rewarding. You know, we all we always beat ourselves up but uh, we can always do better, but we have to pause and and just be grateful for a lot of the good things that are going on and everybody working together. So true. hats off to Crossway for, for their efforts. It, was, it's, it made a difference for those lights. So, Any other public comments? Yes, sir. Be sure to grab some seaweed snacks on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. We're going to go into executive session. As an alternative, I have uh, a half a dozen donuts. In <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, motion to go into executive yeah. session for personnel and pending litigation. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Cardiso? Yes. Commissioner Kushner? That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for remembering. Hi. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Uh, we, we don't have probably any action after this, so. <laughs> <laughs> you need anything? <laughs> <laughs>